Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I have a slimline card for you using the adorable Christmas Scotty bundle that comes with the Christmas Scotty stamp set and the Scotty Dog Punch. These are in the new July through December 2022 Stampin' Up! Hol well, we still call it the holiday catalog, but we call it the mini now. Okay, so we can't just can't drop that holiday. So I'm gonna show you how to make this card. And I wanna say the inspiration was this envelope. Um, Mary Nabe had put um, on one of my demonstrator sites I'm on, uh, the template for making this envelope. And once I got this easy peasy envelope, I could make as many slim lines as I want. So I love this um, envelope template because it uses one sheet of an eight and a half by 11. So that's gonna be a fun thing we're gonna do. But let's just take a little look here at this envelope. I mean, this slimline card it uses this cute little dogs. Now this one I did in a portrait. I mean, a landscape here. So we're gonna make an actual portrait one. So I went ahead and used my Stamparatus. Now what I first did is I just put my little dogs down on my paper. So let's just pretend that we're sticking a piece of paper in here. And I just put my dogs where I thought that they would fit. Um, and they actually did fit. We have a six inch surface to work with here and this piece of paper is eight. So I put my dogs there. Now the reason why I chose an eight inch by three and a half is my card base is seven and a half by eight and a quarter. So eight and a quarter by seven and a half and then half of seven and a half is three and three quarters. And so that was my card base. So then I just made a one eighth inch border the whole way around. So that brought it down to eight inches by three and a half. So what I did is I put my Scotty dogs on there. I inked them up and then I stamped them. Now, just to save us some time, I went ahead and did that already because you may have found out when you're stamping with black, and I was using Memento Black. When you're using black and you're using new stamps, and this was the first time I inked this one up, it takes a little time for the stamp to get like conditioned. So I did end up stamping this three different times to get a really dark black image. So all I did was, you know, ink it back, ink it, and it took three times to get a nice dark black. Okay, and when I did the uh, the landscape one, I did the same thing, except for I put my pups across this way. Okay, and um, so there we go. We've got that part done. Now, I really liked uh, adding a little bit of some plaid to the bottom here. This stamp set actually has the neat tartan um, fabric here, and I wanna, figure out how to use this on another card. It's really, and it stamps so nicely. But I just went ahead and took out a piece of the real red from the gingham cottage to put across the bottom of here. So um, on this one, I did the same thing. And I have to be really careful when I'm making um, this video because since it's such a long card, I wanna make sure I'm keeping everything in focus for you. So what I did is I just took a 3 fourths of an inch high. Um, of the piece of the gingham cottage paper. And then I'm just gonna put that along the bottom here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my stamp and seal since I, stamp and seal since I have it out here. Okay, and a little piece there. And I'm just gonna put that down at the bottom of my card here. Three and a half wide three quarters of an inch high. I wanna make sure I don't have any white showing down there at the bottom. So that's good. And I just have a tiny bit to trim off there. Ha, huh, you can tell I was playing around with that plaid here. I was actually trying the plaid out first without my Stamparatus and I was noticing a little here. And it just takes a little while to get it conditioned. So, um, but, Light. Luckily, it doesn't didn't show through, and I could just use this side. So I've got my cute little dogs there, and that's going to go on the front of our card here. But we're going to go ahead and do a little decorating here. Use some of the sentiments that are in here. I'm going to use my little stampin' spot because 
these um, are haha, a little bit small. So I'm going to use this sentiment that says woof, woof. I've been trying to teach my little granddaughter how to say woof. So I'm going to put the, his mouth is going this way, so I'm going to go woof. And then the other doggy here, he is going to say woof as well. And he is going to be saying it over here, woof. Okay, so we've got two sentiments there. Now his little collar is missing here. And in the stamp set, there's this little tiny collar. So I'm just going to ink that up with my spot as well. And I'm just going to put it right in between the two black parts of the dog right there. And actually we're going to do something else there for him. And then one here. Okay. And, and if you don't get it exactly to the black, the white actually gives it a nice design there because um, it's a little hard the way the angle I'm at. So then also we can put a little bow. There's this little image here. that's kind of like the bow hanging off the back. So we're going to put that on this pup. And then there's an actual little, another little bow. And we're going to put it on this pup because he's facing that way. So there we go. And then I'm going to actually use the punch to do this one. So what I'm going to do is do a little stamping here on this little piece here. I'm going to stamp this full size bow here and just get a nice, looks like it's nice and dark. And I'm going to just put that there hold it down. Ha! Ah, great. So we're gonna now use our punch that has this cute little bow and it's so perfectly, it's so easy to pop right in there. And we've got that little bow there and that is gonna go on our Scotty's cute middle one. We'll just put a couple of these mini dimensionals on here. And there we go, take these little backs off. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get myself all festive here by putting it on the middle one. Okay, so I wanted to put a sentiment on here and there's a Merry Christmas in there. So I'm gonna stamp that also on this piece of white. And we're just gonna simply use our snips to trim out the sentiment. Okay. So we'll stamp right there. We've got Merry Christmas. And then we're just going to take our snips and we're just going to snip as wide as the Merry Christmas, the Christmas word is. And then we're gonna just not really going with the curves or anything. I'm just doing nice straight cuts close to the Christmas. And then I can trim down the Merry. And there we go. And so we can just get rid of these little guys here. Put our ink over here. And then we're just gonna put some dimensional on the back of here. And I'm just going to use some of these little ends that the corner, the, not the corners, but the edges of the dimensionals. And there's one here for the longer one for Christmas. And just pop that on there. And then I'm just gonna pop the Mary on the opposite side of where the woof is. So we're gonna put Mary there. We're gonna put Christmas down here on the opposite side. And then we can put that onto our card. And I'm just gonna put some seal plus. You don't need a lot of this for sure. And we're gonna put that on the front of the card. 
I was so happy that that red didn't show through when I was making this because I already cut that, you know, in a pretty sizable amount. So we're just gonna make sure we've got one eighth around the all four sides and we have this perfect cute little card there so you can make it in landscape or portrait in a slim line. Now, the real key to using this card is being able to fit it in an envelope. So as I said, um, I am gonna show you how to make this envelope. So I wanna be really careful here because I did a run through with this on a video and I kind of noticed that I was off camera a little bit. So I thought I didn't wanna get any destructive criticism on my video. So um, <laughs> I wanted to save my ego, I guess. So I decided to do this one over so that I could make sure that I'm getting everything in. So what we're gonna do is we're starting out with um, eight and a half by 11 and we're going to stick the 11 inch side I had something that's ready to topple off there. We're gonna stick the 11 inch side at the top and we are going to score in, I'm sorry here, we're going to do, um, put the 11 inch side up against the top of our trimmer and we're gonna do on the left side, on the left side of the cutting group, we're gonna to go to three quarters, okay? So we're gonna do with our scoring blade, the light colored one, we're gonna go down three quarters of an inch. Then we're just going to flip to the opposite side so that the three quarters is on this side. Now on this side, we're gonna to go to one and three quarters. So one and three quarters. That's with your 11 inch side at the top. Okay. Then we're gonna turn our paper so that the eight and a half inch side's at the top. And we're gonna score in two inches on one side. and then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna score in two and a half. Okay, I wanna make sure I did this at two. Two, two on one side and the other side we're gonna go, ooh, I just lost my scoring, scoring blade, just popped out of my trimmer there because I'm off the table a little bit. Okay, there we go. I was wondering, what was that? Okay, two and a half inches and that's just a good reminder. Always be checking to make sure that these are in the groove there if you go to put your trimmer away. Okay, so there you go. So I'm gonna pull this aside and make sure that we are in camera. We barely are making it in there. Um, so you have these little corners here, okay? And I in this there's this little scored corner here. We're gonna get rid of this. And then also here, we're gonna get rid of this. Turn this over, this big square here we get rid of, and here we get rid of. Now, I think you can see now all the squiggles, okay? So what we're gonna do is there's a score line here and here, here and here, and then there's one up here, one up here, one down here. So we're technically, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut, I'm gonna make a line here for you on these score lines so you can see them. I'm not going the whole way up. Like you're not gonna do this. I'm just trying to show you this for demonstration's sake. These are the score lines I'm talking about, okay? So that's just showing you where the score, okay, I might as well just show you here. This is a score line as well. This is a score line as well. And this is a score line. And this is a score line. Now what we're going to do on each of these score lines, we're gonna make a triangle um, and we're gonna cut, cause we're gonna not, the way I drew those on there, and if you wanna dry those on there, you could, cause that would then tell you which way you're gonna do. I'm going to cut a little bit on an angle, just a slight bit on an angle up to that score line, okay? Then on this one, I'm also gonna cut a little bit on the angle. Actually, I wanna go a little bit further. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Now you just know that you're cutting on the side to the left of the that line that you've drawn. But don't draw your line the whole way up to the point because you might see the color on there. But this is just a kind of a real quick way then when you're doing it, you're just like, oh, okay, I'm just uh, doing right on the 
edge here and we'll get rid of that right there. Okay, so we've got those two and I actually see I have a little bit here. I'll just trim this off here. Just a little hair there. And because I can see that little, and you know what, I think I'm having a harder time because I'm using my little snips. I like to use a bigger scissors whenever I'm, I'm just going to get that little spot of black ink off there. And then I'll just trim this up a little bit here. Okay, I'll pull that off. Okay, now we're coming back down here and this was this little corner. I'm gonna cut on this left side of the line. And then I'm gonna cut a little, I'm gonna cut a little bit off this to here. And you can see I'm cutting off those lines. I'm gonna try to get this one about the same amount on this one, because this is gonna finish off the card. So we go up to that corner, score. And then we go also on the right side of this line here. And I just wanna get a little, just a little bit on that side, but up to the score line. There you go. So I hope that helped as far as the, um, we cut those little, each of these, like think of it this way, we had these, um, we had the square here that was created by the score lines, we cut those off, plus we went in on each of the score lines. So if, like, let's pretend here, this was a score line and this was a score line and we just went in a little bit on the triangle, okay? So that is how easy it is to do. So then we just come and play around here. Now the reason why we cut in a little bit here is because we, um, if you go to fold this over at the bottom, if this was just straight, if we um, hadn't given a little bit of an angle here, it would have been hard to fold up over there. So what we're gonna do is use some of our tear and tape, or you could use your stamp and seal plus, but you wanna have something that's got good adhesive power. So I find this, tear and tape works well. I love, you know, I found some red line tape the other day and I said, oh gosh, I'm so used to tearing tape now. It would be uh, crazy if I, you know, had to cut it. <laughs> so we're going to use our take your pick tool, that paper piercing side. And then we, um, as you can see, we have enough room here and we only have a little paper showing on the inside. Now, if you had cut this up a little bit further, you wanna make sure that you're not gonna have any adhesive hit the inside of the card, this inside part on this side of the score line because it, of course, is now, oh, you know what, we do that last. We, the first thing we do is this one, is we have the two inch side and we have the two and a half inch side. We're gonna close that first before we close that. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, so on the shorter side, we're going to put some tear and tape right as close to the edge as we can get. And we have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so make sure you can see that. This is the two inch side. If you, do, if you put the adhesive on this side, you would just put it close to the edge. So it really, I guess, doesn't matter which side you put it on. So maybe angle it this way so you can see it a little bit better. And then we're just going to close our envelope by taking that adhesive off and closing down right there. And we've got our nice finished off seam. And if you have any of it showing up here, I mean, if you wanna trim this down, but it really won't matter. Um, let me get that little bit of goop off there, okay? And then we just take this one that we put the adhesive on and we just close it up and we have such a finished looking pretty envelope folds this down. If you look at the side, it looks pretty even here. Looks pretty even. If you if you had cut a little too much, you can keep trimming it down to it, you know, looks about equal, but that looks really good to me. And you can decorate up your Oh, and I almost forgot to get out that stamp. There's a really cute um, set of snowflakes in here. So I'm gonna just put those on and I'm just gonna put some black snowflakes on the outside because 
think it'll look nice. We might actually put some black and red, okay? Some black, and remember we're gonna have our return address, our stamp, so we're safe to put something here. Our little snowflakes, so that's the envelope. And we're going to do something on the inside of this card. I almost forgot about that. We're just going to put, once again, some nice snowflakes. Let me move them off the table so I'm not getting you dizzy. Put some snowflakes up at the top. And then we're gonna put a sentiment. And the sentiment I'm I'm picking, <laughs> may your days be furry and bright. <laughs> so where is that red ink? There we go. I love these little spots for little words. Just so easy to use. We do have them in our paper pumpkins and we also have one of the color selections in the back of the catalog. So it looks like it's all good. May your days be furry and bright. Hold that down so it has a nice image stamped. And I think we might just put some more snowflakes on there. One more set of snowflakes. There we go. Right there. Add some of the black and red for this card. And then we're gonna put that into the inside of our card. Little bits of our Stamp and Seal Plus here. Since we're using that one, we can know it's going to be adhered well. A lot of times I'll look at this angle when I'm putting it in so that I get that equal. Oh, I see a little bit of the Seal Plus hanging out there. So I'm going to pop, look and see that we've got the same amount of space all around, there we go. How adorable. You've got this great envelope. Oh, actually you can see here, this one I, I think it looks a little better the way the cut goes. Whenever it has this little edge here, I prefer, I don't know if we can actually trim it at this point. I prefer to have it, not, not to have one And even if you have to kind of trim it a little bit, it's not that difficult to do. But why would you want to do it in front of thousands of people? <laughs> so there we go. Just trim that up. Gives it a nice edge. So that has a better edge to it than, so this one. Okay, so we've got a cute envelope there that we can put this in. We can do it in a portrait or a landscape. Isn't that cute? Now this little Scotty dog punch punches out this image, but I just kind of went with the one dimensional um, because I was just thought it looked good that way. But this is really cute too. Um, oh, here, I made this little guy this today. I was playing with him and look how cute he is just punched out black. And I put a little googly eye on him and a bow. Um, I was gonna pop him up there and pop him up, but I kind of like the stamped image. So, but he is so cute. <laughs> um, so there you go, the Scotty dog. Uh, so just remember when you're making your envelope, you're just going to put this 11 inch side up at the top of your trimmer and you'll go in three quarters on one side and one and three quarters on the other side. So it doesn't matter which side you do it on, but just remember one of the sides is three quarters of an inch and the other side is one and three quarters. Then you'll turn the eight and a half inch side at the top of your trimmer or your scoring tool and you're gonna go in two inches on one side and two and a half inches on one side. And it doesn't matter which one you do it on. You just remember two and two and a half or two and a half and two. And here it's three fourths and one and three fourths, or it could be one and three fourths and three fourths because you'll know when you go to put the envelope together that it, you know, that you're gonna put down the two inch side and then put down the two and a half. And then you'll be closing up the three quarter inch and then closing down this when you send the card. And this will send, it's um, smaller than legal size, so it will go through the mail, and it shouldn't be any more than a first class postage. 
Uh, so there you go. And when you have this all measured out, you're just cutting, there was score lines here that were made, um, rectangle score lines. You're just cutting those out and then just giving a little bit of a trim on each one of those sides. So we, we trimmed in here, we trimmed in here, and we trimmed in here. And we just like, isn't that just amazing? Once you know how quick and easy you can make that envelope, you'll be making all kinds of different slimline cards. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can also call me or text me at 724-323-2296. All of the products I use, all the measurements, all colors that I use on this card will be on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Underneath the YouTube description is also um, links to the online store and measurements and colors and products. Now, if you see there, visit my blog, press the link that's there. It'll take you over to Cindy Lee B Designs and you'll find all the photos and other additional tips I have for you. And sometimes I might miss saying something in the video and you'll find it over there. Or more often than not, I might say a wrong measurement. <laughs> and so if you go over to the blog, you can say, oh, I think it was supposed to be this. And you'll find that hopefully I caught it. And if I didn't, please feel free to let me know so I can fix it for everyone. Thanks for spending some time and buzzing by.